proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another broadcast of Proudly We Hail, a program of your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we are very happy to present Mr. Edward G. Robinson, who will star in our play, One Way Ticket, written by Richard Hall, with music by Eddie Scrivanek. <laughs> Eddie Willoughby had been deputy marshal for more years than he cared to remember. A job he was the first to admit he hated. And he made the round trip to the state prison over the F and W until he almost knew every telegraph pole along the right-of-way, escorting his guests whose tickets were punched one way. He was thinking this as he walked into Sheriff Callahan's office that morning. Morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Ed. Got a trip for you. Yeah? Who is it this time? Johnny LeClaire. LeClaire? Say, uh, isn't he the one who was mixed up in that warehouse robbery a while back? That's the one. Nice-looking youngster. I remember when they brought him in. He's a wild, crazy kid. He had a lot of trouble with him. You did? I'm plenty glad to get rid of him. What'd he get? Four years. Hmm. Too bad. Too bad. For the trouble he's made for us, I wish they'd given him ten years. No, 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 no. You you don't understand me, Sheriff. I mean, it's too bad nice youngster gets in trouble. I hate this job. When do we leave? Next Wednesday. And remember, Ed, be extra careful with LeClaire. He's a bad one. Here's Johnny LeClaire's papers, Eddie. He's all yours. Thanks. There's a car outside to take you and Johnny to the station. Okay. Well, Johnny, shall we? Huh. Are you kidding? Aren't you going to put those cuffs on me, copper? I don't think so. Why, haven't you heard about me? Oh, sure, sure. But you're, you're going to be a good boy. You think so? Oh, sure. Well, you're just a baby. They were putting diapers on you not so long ago. Yeah? That was 24 years ago, copper. Well, that's not so long ago. Not from where I stand. You're nuts. Over here, Eddie. Right. I may be nuts, Junior, but uh, don't try any monkey business. I can be plenty tough, too. Comfortable, Junior? Sure, sure. This is elegant. Does the state provide a nice compartment for all its guests? No, only the special one. Oh, I'm a special one, then. <laughs> well, you're a babe in arms, aren't you? That again. Oh, I thought you'd probably put the manacles on me and set me up on the aisle, a public display, to prove that crime doesn't pay. Well, they do sometimes, but uh, not my prisoners. I don't believe in that. Of course, your thought could be to isolate me from the good people, like uh, Scarlet Fever. <laughs> you know, uh, Johnny, you ought to read Shakespeare sometimes, Junior. Yeah? Yes, he wrote something once. There's nothing either good or bad, but uh, thinking makes it so. What are you doing, getting literary on me? Well, think it over. Well, this is pretty comfortable. Nice trip if I didn't know where I was going. We'll get our meals in here, too, Junior. You're being awful kind of me. Do you believe in kindness? <laughs> That's a laugh. Hmm. Yeah, it's hot in here. Take off this coat. Yeah, that's better. Uh, where are you from originally, Johnny? Up here a ways. Belleville. Uh -huh. How'd you get mixed up in that trouble in Philadelphia? It's in a prison record. You can read. Yeah. Same old story, isn't it? I think so. The kid comes to the city... Lots of ambition. The things don't move his way quickly enough, so he decided to take the fast way. Now, well, Johnny, you're going to have an awful lot of time to think where you're going. You can say that again. But if you behave yourself, it's going to be over almost before you know it. 
Yeah? That's a very pretty speech, but try to say it from over here, where I'm sitting. Yeah, true, though, wherever you sit. And you can make good use of your time up there. Hey, does this little sermon go along with the ride, or do I pay extra for it? <laughs> no, it's just part of my job, at least the way I look at it. You know, uh, temptation is a funny thing. Is it? Sure. That's what uh, got you this little trip. Remember? Oh, I'd save it, will you? Well, you didn't quite know how to handle it. But you ought to know from here on. Now, uh, well, look at that uh, gun up there hanging by my coat. Huh? Tell me what you thought when I hung her there. Well, I don't know. Come on, come on. Well, I... Uh, come on, come on. I thought you were a little nuts. And I wished you'd hung your coat a little closer to me. Why? Because with that gun, I'm free. Free? Where could you go? I'd get away. I'd go somewhere. They'd never find me. <laughs> You'll make the same mistake, Johnny. You shouldn't even want to touch that gun. No? No, you make the same mistake all over again. You know, I think you're right. I never looked at it quite that way. Now stand back there, you dumb copper. Put that gun down, Johnny. You must be crazy. Put it down, Johnny. Stand back there, I swear I'll blast you. No, no, you won't, Johnny. That gun isn't loaded. Huh? And I was trying to give you a break. Ooh. I hate this job. We pause briefly from our story, One Way Ticket, starring Mr. Edward G. Robinson, to bring you an important message from your war department. You've heard of many prominent hotel systems in this country, but have you ever heard of the Eichelberger chain in Japan? Named by G.I.s there after Lieutenant General Robert L. Eichelberger, commanding general of the 8th Army. This group of 23 luxurious hotels is for rest and recreation of soldiers in that theater. They visit these hotels on a quota basis, usually for a week at no cost to themselves. Since there's no charge on Japanese trains for American soldiers, they're seeing this country more thoroughly than any world tourist in peacetime. Besides the benefits of travel aboard, regular Army soldiers have many other educational opportunities. They may study U.S. AFI, correspondence, or off-duty courses, and the educational benefits of this GI Bill apply until the duration is terminated. Army pay is the highest in history, too. For service overseas, a private starts at $90 a month, in addition to free food, clothing, lodging, dental, and medical care. Ask at your local Army recruiting station today about the 40,000 good Army jobs each month. They'll be glad to discuss your eligibility for one. Act two of One Way Ticket, starring Edward G. Robinson as Eddie Willoughby. Deputy Marshal Willoughby had learned his lesson. Johnny LeClaire is firmly handcuffed as a train on a one-way trip to a state prison close to a stop at a small town en route. Want to get off and stretch your legs, Johnny? Why not? Where are we? You ought to recognize this town. It's your old hometown, Belleville. Belleville? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I've been away a long time. Well, let's go. Yeah, wait a minute. Since what happened a little while ago, I don't want you to get any ideas about running away. Huh. How could I? I'm so attached to you. Well, there it is, Johnny. Town hasn't changed a bit. Bring back lots of memories? Ah, you're too sentimental. I hate this town. I hate everything about it. Say, uh, there's someone up there by the station who keeps looking down this way. Huh? Where? Right up there. Uh, there. A girl. Oh. Know her? Let's get back in the train. Uh, it's too late. Here she comes. Copper, take off these cuffs. I'm sorry, Johnny. Copper, please, give me a break. I gave you a break. I'm sorry, honest I am. Copper, you don't understand. Do it for her. It it'll break her heart if you don't. Oh, I should be so soft-hearted. Thanks, Copper. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Why, Johnny. Johnny LeClaire. Hello, Mary. I thought I recognized you, but I wasn't sure. Oh, uh, Mary, this is... Uh, my name is Willoughby. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Willoughby? How do you do? A friend of yours, Johnny? Uh, yes, Mary, a very good friend. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> but let me look at you, Johnny. You don't seem to have changed much. Don't I? But what's been happening to you? You know, you might send a person a postcard once in a while. But where are you going? Oh, uh, I'm on a little trip. 
Well, that tells me everything, doesn't it, Mr. Willoughby? I know. It's some big business trip. I wish you'd tell me. I'd be thrilled to death. You know, Mr. Willoughby, Johnny used to tell me all about his dreams and hopes before he left Belleville. And I just knew he'd make it. I just knew. Yeah. Uh, what about yourself, Mary? Me? Nothing glamorous about me. I'm working in the Railway Express office. You don't happen to know anyone up in Philadelphia who wants a good secretary, do you? Uh, well, no, but uh, maybe Mr. Willoughby... Oh, that's, that's for us, I guess. We'll stop off on the way back, will you, Johnny? I'll, I'll try. Be gone long? I, I don't know. I, my plans are pretty indefinite. We better get along here. Yeah. I wish I could keep Johnny here. Well, it was awfully nice to meet you, Mr. Willoughby. Thank Goodbye. You. Goodbye. Uh, come along, Johnny. Goodbye, Johnny. Bye, Mary. And if you don't write to me, I'll never forgive you. All right. <laughs> Well, Johnny, this is your last stop. For a while, anyway. Good luck to you. Thanks, copper. You better write that girl. You better tell her the truth. I will. This way, Leclerc. So long, copper. So long. So long. Well, it's another one, Eddie. Yeah. Going back tonight? Yeah. Oh, sir, here's a wire for it. No, oh, thanks. Just a minute, Eddie. Pardon me, Hello. Thanks for everything. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were right. Uh, Johnny you. needs to know someone who believes in him. Yeah. I always have, and I always will. Johnny someday will know what a friend you've been. Mary. Who's the wire from, Eddie? Hmm? Oh, uh, my broker. Some stock I invested in just went up 20 points. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Say, I better be getting along if I'm going to make my train back. Um, well... Well, what? I don't get you this trip, Eddie. You're usually beefing about how much you hate your stinking job. Hate it? Why, man, I've got the greatest job in the world. Yes, sir, the greatest. This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story starring Edward G. Robinson as Eddie Willoughby. Before leaving you, here's a message for all of us. What have the locust, the boll weevil, the corn borer, and the potato hopper to do with the United States Army? Just this. Army scientists have developed sprays and flamethrowers to aid farmers in destroying these insect pests. Decontamination trucks for spraying cattle, new insecticides such as DDT, and smoke generators for protecting growing crops against frost are but a few of the Army developed devices of benefit to agricultural workers. In many scientific fields, your new regular Army is making important contributions to better living today. In medicine, aviation, electronics, radar, engineering, and many others, regular Army technicians are carrying on a program of research and experimentation. For men who qualify, an Army career is high paid. Privates start at $75 a month and receive free food, lodging, training, clothing, medical and dental care, the equivalent of an income in civilian industry of $50 a week. And after only 20 years' service, a soldier may retire on half pay or up to three-quarters pay for 30 years' service. The retirement income of a first or master sergeant after 30 years' service is $185.63 monthly. In a commercial insurance retirement plan, this would cost over $80 every month for 30 years. But the soldier pays nothing. Each month, there are 40,000 high-paying jobs in the Army for competent young men who can qualify. Ask at your local Army recruiting station now about your eligibility for one of these. Thank you, Edward G. Robinson, for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in.